you are looking forward to watching the finals and you're watching on the Talamundi live stream, go to www.talamundi while you're already there. Go to Twitter and RGMMC is the Twitter feed. So at RGMMC, let us know where you're watching from and who you're cheering for. We've got drivers from 13 different nations. Britain and Spain have got 40 dri uh, 20 drivers apiece here, 40 drivers in total, nine Frenchmen, three Dutchmen, two drivers from Portugal, three from Norway, one from Ireland, one from Peru, Israel, Austria, Denmark, Poland and Sweden, all represented here. And the green flag is waved from the start line gantry and on we go to the rolling lap. So, Maximus Meyer leading Sergio Ruiz, Kasper Janssen, Sondre Norheim, Felix Heiberg, and Miron Pingasov around the first of two rolling laps. Meyer, 11 years old from Alicante. Ruiz, 10 years old, Flo from Latamelia del Valles, Janssen, 11 year old from Uppsala, Norheim, 9 years old from Haugesund, Heiberg, he is 11 years old from Orskog, and Pingasov, 10 years old from Barcelona. And it's amazing what these youngsters, they put down in their commentator information sheet, what they like doing. Well, Max Mayer, he wanted to make sure that he mentioned his sponsor, Sea Line Costa Brava. Sergio Ruiz says, well, I like playing, like doing karate in my spare time. And uh, Sandra Norheim, focused young man, says, nope, I want to be going to the Porsche Carrera Cup when I'm older. Casper Janssen is a keen floorball player. And I suggest if you don't know what floorball is, well, go and look it up on the internet. It's a Scandinavian thing, let's just say that. Kind of a bit like curling, a bit like hockey. But not karting, and that is all that Casper is thinking about now. As Maximus Mayer brings the field through turns nine and ten. Ruiz in that blue and yellow Alonso cart on the outside of the front row. Mayer just checks over to see where his rival is. He's in the green and white Tony cart from the Marlin cart team. And then Janssen, you can see in that predominantly white black but with flecks of red on it, in third place, similar liveried cart to Sondra Norheim, who's got a mainly whiter, bit, bit more white on his cart. Then that red and white cart of Pingasov, and the cart with the white NASA panel and nose cone and black side pods. That's Felix Heiberg. Here we go. Through turn number 13, and Maximus Mayer gets the finals here at the Winter Cup underway, and it's a great start from the outside of row number one for Sergio Ruiz, who gets the jump on the pole sitter. On this, the first of 12 laps through turns number one and two. Now down towards turn three. Ruiz dives to the inside. Oh, he's going to overshoot turn three by quite a lot. He outbreaks himself. Mayer sweeps underneath him, and Ruiz is going to lose second. He loses second place to Janssen, but he fights back coming through turn number six. Retakes P2 from the Swedish driver. Norheim is next. Then it's Heiberg. Pingasov still down in sixth position. And Maximus Mayer, despite a poor start, Finds himself leading by a couple of cart lengths as they come through turn number 9 and 10 for the first time. But now, as they open up the throttle, get up to full speed through the flat-out right-hander at turn 11. Watch how much Ruiz closes in, in the slipstream. The gap comes down from three cart lengths to two cart lengths to one cart length. And as they get to the braking zone for turn number 13, he is right back on Mayer's rear bumper. 
on to the start finish straight they go to complete lap number one and Ruiz uses that slipstream to slingshot to the inside and take over the race lead can he get the cart slowed down on the apex for turn number one yes he can Maintains top spot. Mayer, Janssen, Pingasov now up to fourth place. We can see at the back of our screen. Then it's Norheim and Heiberg. All six drivers still pretty much nose to tail as they come through turn number six on lap two. And Max Mayer will maybe look to try and push Ruiz away. Or will he die to the inside? He is locked on to Ruiz's rear bumper. As they come through turn number nine, he is uh, not going to let go of that. He is going to notice that Pingasov, which you'll notice is a danger man, Pingasov and Janssen, they're the two other drivers that have really shown race-winning pace this weekend. And Mayer will think, well, if I can keep them a couple of seconds behind me and Ruiz, then it's just a straight fight. And, of course, Mayer beat Ruiz in a straight fight earlier this morning. So he'll be confident that in a one-on-one -on -one tussle he can come out on top however pingasov has moved into third place you can see him just flashing through the bottom of your screen there with the uh, orange flex on the back of his rear bumper through turn number three they go pingasov was 1.3 seconds down we'll check the lap times as they come around because this circuit split into three timing sectors through the first sector ruiz was a tenth quicker than Pingasov. And Max Mayer just doesn't want to try and engage in a battle just yet. He wants to try and avoid going side by side. And as long as Ruiz is showing the kind of pace that he is, Max Mayer is not even close enough to try and make a passing manoeuvre. There's Pingasov being chased by Janssen in third and fourth. You see Pingasov hunching down behind the NASA panel just to try and create a little bit more aerodynamic efficiency. Into turn number 13 now. Ruiz followed by Mayer through turn 13. Out to complete lap number three. The gap between the top two, Pingasov and Janssen in third and fourth, has grown to one and a half seconds nearly through turn number one. Mayer hugging the rear bumper of the race leader, nibbling away every once in a while at that gap that grows to a cart length, and then Mayer quickly closes it back up to little more than a cigarette paper's worth, and occasionally you'll see the green and white nose of that number 919 car just rest itself on the yellow number plate on the rear bumper of that number 921 car as you can see Janssen doing there to Pingasov as they come down that infield straight you can see Janssen just draws up ever so slightly onto the rear bumper of Pingasov this is lap number four through turn 12 Sergio Ruiz, then Mayer, across the final corner, onto the start-finish straight. Mayer not battling, and there you go. You can just see him just rubbing the rear bumper of Ruiz's car just to give him an extra couple of revs, maybe an extra tenth of a mile an hour. It all helps in kart racing, and that is proof of the pudding is that they're pulling away by another two-tenths of a second over the battle for third place. There they come the leaders through turn number six now. There's the battle for third, 9-2-3 and 9-2-2. Pingasov leads Janssen. Behind them, Norheim, a further second and a half back in fifth. Heiberg a couple more seconds. So the two Norwegian drivers that we did fear that if the leaders don't battle, if the leaders work together, which is what we're seeing now, then Norheim and Heiberg wouldn't quite have the pace to stay with them. What they need is that they need Sergio Ruiz and Max Mayer to really start to go side by side. That'll slow each other down. That'll bring Pingasov and Janssen into play. And if they all start battling, it'll slow them all up. And then, even though you can think Norheim is two and a bit seconds back, it doesn't matter. If the leaders start battling, that two and a bit seconds will come down to nothing very, very quickly indeed. Through turn number one. Now turn two, that flick hard on the brakes. Now for turn three. And Max Mayer, he is clinging to the rear bumper of this race leader, Sergio Ruiz, like a terrier on a postman's ankle. As he turns through turn number six, he refuses to let go. On to the infield straight. Now we watch Janssen doing the same type of thing to 
Pingasov as Mayer is doing to Ruiz. Not wanting to battle. Working with him. Now, these two drivers we're looking at now, 923 and 922, they actually came together in one of the heat races yesterday, uh, just arguing over the same little bit of real estate. And uh, it ended up with them both in the uh, gravel trap, but they've obviously forgotten about that, and they know that... Uh, they could be still mad at each other for the accident yesterday, but they need to work together now. And they're doing it. And they're actually closing in. Last time around, Kasper Janssen sets a new fastest lap. For the first time, he goes a tenth quicker than the two leaders as we start the second half of this race. We're on lap 7 out of 12. Ruiz and Mayer are continuing to work together, but now Janssen is pushing Pingasov along. Pingasov We'll be happy with that. The gap was 1.7 seconds. It's now down to 1.5 seconds. These are the two fastest carts on circuit. The 923 of Pingasov, the 922 of Janssen. Can they close in? There goes Heiberg through the bottom of the screen. He is there in sixth position. He's four seconds behind Norheim, who is in turn four seconds behind Pingasov and Janssen. Now, believe it or not, Pingasov will think... I'm. Well, Janssen will be thinking, oh, I'm glad I'm quicker than Pingasov at the moment because I can push him. Pingasov is still quick, so he's not holding Janssen up. Let's see what the gap comes down to. It grew by a tenth through the middle sector. The leaders come into turn number 13, and Pingasov and Janssen are right there. They've still got a bit of work to do, and now Mayer, for the first time, looks to the inside, passes Sergio Ruiz, as we begin lap number 8 out of 12, that's going to help Pingasov and Janssen. The gap has come down to 1.4 seconds. Will Ruiz fight back? Pingasov sets the new fastest lap, 64.14. That's probably got more to do with the fact that he had Janssen shoveling him along. And the gap's down again to 1.2. Well, Pingasov and Janssen... Can they keep it up? They're still working together into turn number nine. The two leaders flash through in front of them. Janssen will want to get his nose cone onto Pingasov's rear bumper as soon as they straighten the carts up. Now, there we go. And you can see them locked together, flat out, through the right-hander at turn 12. Now, hard on the brakes. Tiny bit of curb through the middle of the complex. They let the cart float out wide. The gap comes down from 1.2 to less than one second. Mayer and Ruiz are being caught as we begin lap number nine out of 12. Pingasov and Janssen, and they'll know that it's working. They'll know their tactics are working. And that will give them just an extra bit of momentum. And now we don't need two camera shots to show the top four. We only need one because... That gap has halved in the last three laps. It's gone from 1.7 to just over half a second. And there's nothing that Mayer and Ruiz can do about it because they have been trying to work together as well. Mayer, obviously sensing that Ruiz was slowing him down, made the move. Ruiz, though, hasn't been dropped. And Ruiz is now pushing Mayer along. But even though they're trying to work together... Pingasov and Janssen have got the momentum and very, very soon we are going to have a lead quartet, not a lead duo, across the line to complete lap number nine and go on to 10 of 12. This is bubbling up very nicely indeed. Through turn number one goes Maximus Mayer in cart number nine, one none. Sergio Ruiz right behind him. Then it is Miron Pingasov. Three Spaniards and a Swede in the top four. Can Kasper Janssen pull off a huge shock and beat the local aces? Well, he's got to get past all three of them, but he is quick. And you can see Janssen, he's got so much more confident now with Pingasov that even through the corners, he's trying to draft and slipstream with the driver of the number 923 cart. The gap is less than half a second. It's down to about four or five cart lengths. And it's going to shrink even more when they get onto the back straight. Watch to see how much closer Pingasov and Janssen get now as the slipstream effect comes into play. Ruiz checks over his shoulder, realizes, uh-oh, the game is nearly up we've got company and he makes his move accordingly he doesn't want to be caught in the middle of a sandwich he moves into top spot mayor now checks over his shoulder does mayor attack or does he defend he attacks but 
Ruiz in front of him defends, and Pingasov's going to get a great run coming out of the first corner. Lap 11 of 12, Pingasov in third place has got the momentum. Can he do anything with it? No, the track is blocked as Ruiz overshoots turn number three ever so slightly. Mayer can't capitalise, however. Pingasov and Janssen are right there. What can Kasper Janssen do? Very, very soon, they're going to get a situation where we're two, possibly even three wide in front of Kasper Janssen. And if Kasper Janssen can find a hole, the slipstream will be absolutely massive. Mayer goes to the outside into turn number nine. Now he'll try the undercut on Sergio Ruiz coming out of turn ten now. Can he do it? Not this time. On to the back straight for the penultimate time. Ruiz is going to have to hug the inside line. Can Mayer go round the outside? What does Sergio Ruiz do? He is moving and drifting back to the, in the middle of the track. Good, sensible driving. Mayer's going to go round the outside and try and cut him underneath as they come on to the start of the final. Oh, a little bit of contact there. Mayer gets sideways. Pinkasov to the inside. Now, the final lap begins. Ruiz leads. Pingasov gets second, but he's now running wide. Oh, Janssen and Pingasov touch ever so slightly. They drop back to third and fourth. Here comes Mayer back into P2. Ruiz defends through turn three, but he defends too deep, and he's going to get swamped. Mayer takes the lead. Janssen up to second. Pingasov and Ruiz side by side for third. Oh, Ruiz just left his braking ever so late there for turn three. Overshot the corner. Has that cost him the win? Has it opened the door for Maximus Mayer or even Kasper Janssen? Can the number 922 Kasper Janssen beat the three local aces? One Swedish driver, three Spaniards, we've got four corners to go. Make that three through turn number 11. Mayer hugs the inside. Janssen will try and swing round the outside now. He's getting the slipstream, then he's going to cut wide through turn 12. And now it's one corner to go. Can Mayer defend? Oh, Mayer leaves the door open. Janssen clatters over the curb. He runs wide. And Mayer sweeps back in for victory. Hands in the air. Oh, Maximus Mayer. That was a brave decision. He left the door open for Kasper Janssen and banked on Janssen out breaking himself, which he did. And Mayer was able to cut back underneath for the win. And Janssen then got pipped for second by Sergio Ruiz. And has to settle for third. Ruiz takes second. Janssen third. Pingasov, who thought he had a chance of the victory, finishes in fourth place, and look at the gap. Less than four tenths of a second separate the top four at the end. And the Valencian marshals showing their appreciation. There go the firecrackers. And... The firecrackers are very well deserved for the Mini X30 drivers after a fantastic race. Maximus Mayer, British born, now residing in Spain and racing with a Spanish license. He is your provisional.